So we've now seen um, various encryption systems, various signature systems, and now also some CAMs. And in all of those, the secret key, this uh, well, the private key for the public key uh, system carries a lot of power. So anybody who ever gets this can do operations for a lot of messages. And in reality, we often have structures where we don't want a single person to have that much power. So in the physical world, if you um, are a director of a bank, you'll have a special key to open the key vault, but you can't actually open the key vault, uh, the bank vault just with your own key. You will always need a second person. Or if you are a rich person and you're getting a box at a, at a bank, then you will not be able to just go there, well, I guess, unless you're very, very rich and you own the whole bank. Um, so normally you can only go there together with somebody else and then both of your keys have to be present in order to open this. Now, in the cryptographic world, we're dealing not with physical keys, we're doing, dealing with, well, numbers as keys, and we still might want to kind of implement something similar to this. We're now doing the simpler case, which is called a threshold system, where we're just saying, well, we have some number n users, and we are okay if any t of them are together. So we don't have like the special roles of the bank director and the customer and the clerk or something who have different keys and one of each must be present. We're just saying, well, as soon as three people are present, they can open the thing. Or three people can sign, three people can decrypt. But we want to ensure that no fewer than three can do anything. So if you have only two people or just one single person, they shouldn't be able to get any information. They shouldn't be able to recover the key and they shouldn't be able to do the operation the key is used for. And so if you have a set of n users and making a system so that t of them can access this or recover a secret, then it's a t out of n system. So you need t out of the n users. So threshold just means as a threshold of t people that can use the key or that can decrypt, that can sign, and any few of them cannot. And you can have more complicated access structures. So the, the simpler way is, for instance, the bank director counts for three and so he gets three key shares. And so if you want to have at least four people there, then it must be the bank director and at least one customer or at least one clerk. Um, there are other schemes which can handle different roles, can handle different types of keys, but we are only covering the simplest version, which is, well, all, sh all shares are equal. Some people might be holding more shares, but that is outside of the system. So that's the motivation for the system. So Shamir's secret sharing will be achieving such a, a, a tiered of n system. Um, but let's look a little bit at what mathematics we can use. So here's an idea. So here's a graph, or here's a coordinate system. And what I'm plotting here is x and a function. Now, these functions, you see the red ones and all the blue ones, are just lines. So these are degree one polynomials. And when you're looking at these, then, well, if you fix this point that, well, all the other ones seem to be rotating on, then if you fix one more point, say the top point here, then that uniquely determines a line through them. If you fix a different point, you're getting a different line, getting a different line, getting a different line. So if you only know one point, you cannot figure out anything about where this line through that point would intersect the y-axis. So any of the blue lines or the red lines is a candid line. Now, in this case, the correct line or the line that I want to use would be the red line. And that is uniquely determined by the point given and this other point, which is like the third from the bottom. But if I don't have this point here, if I only know, well, there is a point somewhere at this x coordinate, but I don't know what the y coordinate is, I have no idea what the intersection will be. And I can do this not just with lines, I can also do this with conic sections. So that means degree two polynomials. And then I'm getting the following picture. So all of these are polynomials of degree, well, at most two, you also see that I uh, put in there one line again. So if you have three points, 
you can uniquely find one polynomial of degree at most two that goes through them. And then once you have the polynomial of degree at most two, then that uniquely determines where the intersection with the y-axis is. So in this case, if the red one is the correct one, you see, well, there's an intersection somewhere around here. And then, well, those two points, I'm having two shares, but I don't know where the third one is. And so not knowing where the third one is means I don't know what the intersection will be. And if I generalize this more, if I have t points, then I can uniquely define a polynomial of degree t minus 1. And if I have fewer points, then I always have an uncertainty of exactly where this intersection is. And of course, I mean, if I happen to have chosen the polynomial to have lower degree, if it was a line instead of a degree 2 polynomial, I would have had the information, but I don't know that it's a degree 1 polynomial. So even though there is this one example of a line and the two points that I have would be enough, not knowing where the third point is means I have no information where the intersection would be. And that is the background of Shamir's secret sharing. So Shamir had the idea to share an integer a in the following method. So he picks this a as exactly this intersection with the y-coordinate, and then he builds a polynomial of degree t minus 1 around it. Now this polynomial has to be totally random. The only thing we want to fix about this polynomial is that it intersects at a, but all the other things should be secret, not known to anybody. So we're picking t minus 1 coefficients and then building this polynomial here. So each of the fi from 1 to t minus 1 goes to an xi, and then the constant term is set to a. So if you now evaluate this polynomial of x equals 0, then only the constant remains. Anything which has an x, well, that's when we get into 0. So we're having a plus something times 0, which is just a. So this polynomial um, would fit with this picture here if the a is the intersection with the y-axis. So we're picking this, picking this polynomial, and then each user, each of our end users, will get exactly one point on the x-axis, so that's the i here, and then the matching um, point on the graph. So the user gets i f1. So that's matching the dots that are here. And of course, I must not give anybody the uh, point at zero, because if anybody has a point at zero, well, that is the secret. f of zero is a, so i equals zero is excluded, um, but all other integers are fine. I'm using integers here to avoid having issues with precision. You could use uh, rational numbers and so on, but it's important that everybody gets their own number. If people would get the same, then they cannot combine their shares. Now, this might be desired if you want to say, well, I have an access structure where it can be at most one of the customers, then each customer could get the same i. But that also means there is no actual information on which customer it was. So it's probably not a good idea. And in general, we just want to ensure that the crypto of math works here. So we're saying, well, we have our end users. Each of these end users get the unique non-zero i. It can be a negative number, but it has to be unique to them. And then they're getting this i and f of i. So each of them gets one dot in the graph. And then there's a thing which you might have seen in numerics, which is called Lagrangian equation, which recovers the whole polynomial given t minus one, uh, sorry, given t points. So we're going to have the formula on the next slide. So there is some mathematics which allows us to recover this whole polynomial if we have t shares. So if you have t points on the graph, similar to how two points fix a line, how three points fixes parabola. And if you have fewer points, you cannot recover, well, anything in particular, you cannot recover the f of zero. There's a caveat. When I say, well, each user received this, this is secret information. So it's a secret share. It's a, well, not just a share of the secret, but it's also something which has to be kept secret. So you can't just broadcast this. Anybody who sees the i f of i has all the information that this user has. And so when the user gets this information, user gets a share, this has to be transmitted 
with using encryption. Or everybody has to come to the issuer some way that nobody can spy on this. Because anybody who spies on this, well, has the information and therefore needs one share less. And that would be contradicting the requirement. All right, I promised you the Lagrange interpolation. I'm actually not giving you the full formula. We don't actually need to recover the whole polynomial. We only need to recover the point where it intersects the y point. So we need to recover the f of 0. And so the f of 0, well, it would be taken. So if you have seen Lagrange interpolation, you can just plug in x equals 0 into that polynomial. And then you should be getting this formula here. So there's normally the ik minus x. Now x is 0, so there's no x in this formula. All right. So I don't want to make any assumptions on which users are doing this, but to make it easy for you, you can just assume it's the first t users. So it's, say, users that are 1, 2, 3, and t. But in general, whatever positions i sub j they have been. We do need to have that their shares are different. So you can't have one participant play two times. So it has to be ij is not the same as ik for j not equal to k. And then here's the formula how to reconstruct this. So there's a sum over those t shares. So the second part is about the y coordinates of their points. And then there's a big product which runs over all other indices. So j, uh, k is not equal to j. And then it's just the i sub k divided by i sub k minus ij. So these t minus 1 fractions for each summand, so it's kind of an expensive computation if you have a large t. Um, well, I have to exclude j equals k because else I would be dividing by 0. So this is a fraction where the denominators are non-zero because, well, we're evaluating at different points. And so we're getting some valid expression there. And that gets us f of 0. Now, if you have more than t users who are sending their shares, you can just ignore the other ones. So this formula only takes exactly t shares. If you have t minus 1 or fewer, you will have some uncertainty. And as we've seen in the pictures for the small numbers, small examples, small degrees, but you can also just prove this yourself for any other degree. Depending on what the last value is, so if you're having only t minus 1 of these f i sub j's, depending on what you put as the last one, you can reach any a. So having fewer, core, uh, fewer dots means you have no information of what the result is. At first, this is a little bit counterintuitive because you know so much about this function. But just not knowing one of those means any value is possible. Now, this is how we normally explain Shamir's secret sharing. But in reality, nobody should ever know the secret because like, you can't trust anybody to, to forget about it. If you've done this, well, if all the tea parties got together and they computed A, well, they know it. It's no longer shared. Everybody has the full knowledge. So they don't need the others anymore. Or if it's some special access structure, they see all kinds of shares, and if the next time they want to have other groups, maybe there are some differences, they need fewer shares. So, no, this is not good. Now, in theory, we can say, okay, it's actually not the users who combine this, but there's a trusted party, very, very trusted, and you can trust this party, so just, well, we want to reconstruct A, so you're giving your share to this trusted party, the trusted party will do this computation bit on the last slide. Then we'll get A, we'll use the A, so it will be able to sign or to decrypt or to decapsulate. And afterwards, because it's so trusted, it will totally forget all the shares and it will forget A. Yeah, yeah of course. Well, in cryptography, we have these trust problems, so we never trust anybody to do this. but we also don't have to. These polynomials have a nice feature that you can actually take the shares and operate on them to do other computations. So one last nice way, which you're also going to see on Thursday in the exercises, so for those who are watching this sometime later, um, download exercise sheet 7, 
to uh, see some examples of what you can do and then figure out how you could do this. So the idea is if you want to compute, say, a different Hamann part, you're taking something which you want to compute to the A. Well, this A is just this expression in all the parts where the F of I sub J are the secrets, but all the other parts are known. And nice enough, there's a sum. So sum in the exponent we can compute. So we can actually do a partial Diffie-Hellman computation, or for Algamal would be partial decryption, for Algamal signatures would be partial signature, um, and can do this using our share. So we're not giving up the knowledge of f of i sub j, we're giving up the knowledge of the thing that we need to compute to that power. Oh, but that's a discrete log. Nobody can get from this result our secret. And then somebody can compute that thing to the this big product, or compute the product as an integer, and compute times that in the exponent, and then compute the product of the sum in the exponent of all of this. So this uses the additivity of the shares, and of course it depends on the scheme. So if you're trying to do the same with RSA, it sort of works, but it's a lot harder. Well, you're going to figure it out. We still have the problem that sometime at the very beginning somebody knew A. And this might not be a problem if you have something where it's, say, the bank owner who should be able to sign anyway, but he also wants to give the ability to his employees. And then if five of the employees get together, they should be able to sign. But he also alone wants to be able to sign. So in that case, it's not a problem that some party knows A. But in a normal situation, that is not desired. And in particular, in the threshold scheme that we're looking here, the well, t out of n schemes, each of those t shares or each of those n shares should be equal. There's nobody who knows more. There's nobody who at some point knew A. And we can actually do this. So the way that we can generate A is in a distributed manner. So T users, each of them picks some integer. And then the simplest version is that the A is just the sum of those T integers. So nobody knows this and nobody will ever know. Well, they can compute a public key that belongs to A because they can compute g to the A as g to the A1 times g to the A2 times g to the A3, etc. And then they share out their pieces of A. So user 1 who computed A1 shares it out in a t out of n manner to all the n parties. And then user 2 does the same with his A a2, the 3 is this a. So the first part, there's only t of them who contribute. And those t users, none of them knows the whole thing. Nobody knows more than one over t pieces of it, well, one out of t pieces. And each of them shares their result in a t out of n manner. And then each user of these n receives t shares. So that's first user, second user, third user. Now, if we have the simplest case that the um, A is just the sum of the AI, and if those T users agree that this user gets I equals 1, this user gets I equals 2, he gets I minus 3, she gets I equals minus 4, and so on, then these users can actually combine those T shares into 1 by just adding them. And this way, well, the A that nobody has ever seen is shared among the n users in a t out of n. And then if the scheme is friendly enough, then it's very easy to use it in a shared manner. And for other schemes, that is a little bit more complicated, but can also be done.